Wow, it's been a while. Uh, over a month. Uh, been pretty busy. Um, but yeah, let's see if I remember how to do this because I've got to make up from today, August 27th, up until I'll be finished in February. So I got to make up some time though from August up until today, October 1st, who is technically the feast day of St. Therese of Lisieux, who's one of my favorite saints. So maybe she's the one who motivated me to get back on doing this, doing these videos so I can finish out my goal. So without further ado, good morning and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Saturday, October, no, Saturday, August 27th, and it is the 21st week of Ordinary Time and the feast day of St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. Um, and St. Monica, she's known for her outstanding Christian virtue, um, Particular, particularly the suffering that she endured and went through with her husband's adultery, um, as well as her prayer life that was dedicated to the reformation of her son, uh, who her son, as I said, is St. Augustine, uh, who's one of the most influential doctors of the early church um, due to her intense prayer. Uh, and she, because St. Augustine wrote extensively about his mother, St. Monica, and her level of piety in her life in his book, in one of his most popular works, uh, Confessions. Um, but yeah, popular Christian legends recall her, St. Monica, as weeping every night for her son, Augustine. So, with all that being said, St. Monica um, could probably relate to a lot of people, especially a lot of women. Um, and she is the patron saint of difficult marriages and disappointing children. Otherwise, today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It will be as when a man who was going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the one who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. And the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got back interest with my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will grow rich, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. What an intense gospel, um, especially to get back into the swing of things within myself. Um, and we got this is a parable about talents, but we need to keep in mind that this has absolutely nothing to do with monetary gain. Um, we talking talking about money, um, because it's we're not talking about that. Jesus is rarely ever talking about that. In fact, he persuades us to be very cautious with our money and wealth. But he's talking about our talents in regards to the gifts that he has blessed us with, and he knows exactly. He knows us perfectly. He knows our heart. He knows our desires. He knows our strengths. He knows our struggles. He knows how much influence we can have, and that he can do through us based upon ourselves. And we can't get caught up in this whole comparison trap because the compar comparison is the thief of all joy. 
Because if you look here in this gospel, the person with five talents who was able to produce five more talents earned the exact same reward as the one who had two talents and came back with two talents. So Jesus, the gospel responds with the exact same response of saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. So whether you have five or two, because we're all unique. We all have our own unique talents, but we all have different strengths. And so we get caught up into thinking like, oh, that guy's super holy. I want to be like them. Or that girl's super talented. I want to be, I need to be like her. But maybe that's not God wants you, wanted you to be. And so we got to make sure we don't get caught up in, in this comparison trap while also making sure that we do do what God is asking us with what he's gifted us. And this ties in very well with the early part of St. Augustine before he became St. Augustine, before he was wasting his talents. He was just going on fornicating, doing all this, that, and the other, blowing money, sleeping with women, doing every sin under the sun. I think he even had a kid. Uh, but then he ended up having this radical conversion. And that's where our faith in comes in. And this is where the power of prayer comes in. Because St. Monica interceded for her son, which is why intercessory prayer is a real thing. But do some research on St. Augustine and maybe even read his confessions and see what exactly he did and what he, where he was and where he went. A more modern priest um, that has that radical experience is maybe looking into um, Father Don Calloway and re do a little research on his story. It's pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, our sister Miriam, uh, who had a, a volleyball career in college, and then she ended up throwing it all away to be a, a, a nun. But many things, many people sacrifice things, and they do stuff with their talents for the glory of God, unlike the one who just buried it. Because what happened to the one who had a whole bunch of talents and didn't do anything? They were sent to hell, and that's pretty serious. Um, so we got we can't put too much pressure on ourselves, but we also got to make sure that we're not just being lazy. And that's what he says right here. Um, what does it say? If I can find it. You wicked, lazy servant. So we can't give in to sloth. Um, yeah. So what is it in our life? Sorry, I'm kind of one on the ramble. You can tell it's been a while since I've done a video, huh? So to wrap it all up, um, A, maybe the challenge might be, don't compare yourself with other people as much, especially their successes. Um, or um, maybe what is it that you are doing to take advantage or to utilize the talent that God has given you to help bring Christ to others? Um, because we all have that duty and our responsibility, especially as baptized Christians. Once we become baptized, that's that mark that we can't get rid of, whether we like it or not. So with all that being said, have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. In the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.